All right, ladies and gents, welcome to Mavera Tech Talk, the second episode. Uh, basically, a series where we discuss the development and applications of digital twins across industries. My name is Emil Varesma, and I'll be your host today. Today's episode is about digital twins in electrical driveline conceptual design. And uh, presenting for us today is one of our very own technical project manager at Mavea, Dr. Jarko Nokka. So, Jarko, welcome. So glad to have you with us today. Thanks, Emil. Good to be here. Great. So now, before we actually get into, into Jarko's presentation, I'll give some very brief technical instructions and a very brief overview of what we do here at Mavea. So, without further ado, let's get into the instructions. So, as attendees, you should have a view that looks like this. By default, this event is a one-way audio, so all of the microphones will be on mute. You also have a raise hand feature, which we may use in some impromptu polls. And finally, we have the ask a question feature. So any of the questions you may have um, during Yarko's presentation, uh, just send them right over here and we'll aim them we'll aim to include them in our, our q a q a session and then finally we have the chat feature which by default is invisible to the audience but i will use the chat as an uh, auxiliary uh, announcement channel should any technical difficulties arise with the audio on our side but that's it for the technical stuff let's get started so introduction um in short, we develop physics-based digital twins, including software, services, and full simulator systems that just cater to an array of industries. These include, for example, mining, uh, material handling, cranes, construction equipment, harbor, and forestry. And now, there are many definitions of digital twins around the, the market, has various versions of digital twin but our twins are physics based so they can be used independently of a physical product uh, this means that you can use it in product development way before your physical product is ready uh, the whole ensemble includes a, a virtual environment where the machine operates uh, virtual sensors which help it detect its environment a work process which it fulfills and uh, the machine itself as well as an interface to machine control system. In other words, the machine is connected to its environment in two ways. The machine works in its environment and it detects its environment using virtual sensors. Now, digital twins can provide value across entire product life cycles, ranging all the way from the development phase to operation and services. And now let's take a look at a short video of what our digital twin does. The video is on mute, there is no sound right now, but you can see that uh, the digital construct, which is displayed in the video, is not fully rigid. And this is due to accurate modeling. Um, Mevia's digital twin takes into account structural flexibility. And for example, as you see here, the hydraulics provide the simulated machine some degree of flexibility. And here we can see material handling process of placing coal into the hopper, an example of joint simulation. Now, let's move on into the unique capabilities of Mevers Digital Twin. 
So some repetition from the previous page, some of the key capabilities that make it unique um, in the marketplace is that it's based on multi-physics. Uh, main capabilities uh, are shown on the video on the right, I'll show it in a minute, includes the machine, the environment, the work process, the interface control system, and the virtual sensors. And last but not least, it's real-time capable. So right now, top left, you can see the LiDAR in action, the sensors, and the bottom row, there's a virtual machine operating in virtual environment. You can see that the soil, which it is kind of working on, is deformable. And top right, you can see the hydraulics pressure from the digital twin. Moving on to some typical use cases, you can see what the product development process typically looks like. Um, usually the concept design phase can last for months before you even get to work on, on the actual systems. So um, once you finally reach the, the uh, con detailed design phase, um, it can take years. And once you reach the verification phase, well, you may have to build multiple prototypes. So the different approach, the digital twin approach, is that you can do your early validation of the concept during the concept design phase, basically just ensuring that you start developing the right product. In, uh, in the detailed design phase, you can already conduct cross-disciplinary testing of the subsystem, so early system level testing. And finally, in the verification phase, you can use the digital twin as a virtual prototype even before building your physical final prototype. And uh, since you can work and test the subsystems in the detailed design phase, there's no need to build multiple prototypes. You just need to build one. Now, moving to some of the business benefits, keeping it short, there's a reduction in development lead time, decrease in the physical prototyping costs as you need. You don't need as many physical prototypes as you would in the traditional approach. And finally, there's a significant reduction in the PLC software implementation time. Now, getting to the final part, um, typical exa some examples of our customers, the so Liebherr, Earth Moving, uh, Sandvik Mining and Rock Technology, and Siemens Cranes. They actually happen to be keynote speakers at our annual seminar uh, last year. So if you want to check out the, the seminar on demand, then you can do that by registering on our website, by visiting mevea.com, going to resources, events, and finding Mevea Seminar 2020 summary and clicking register now. But uh, that's it for the introduction. Without further ado, I will give the stage to Jarko. So Jarko, if you are ready, let's take it away. All right. Um, thank you, Emil. That was a good introduction to what Mevea does and is. And also, from my part, uh, welcome to our attendees. Uh, my name is Jarko Nokka, and I will be giving a short presentation on how these kind of digital twin approach that Mevea has adopted um, can be used as an effective design tool for electrification and hybridization analysis. Um, I will go through in brief the hybridization, electrification, what it does, why is it done and what it can achieve and then go into more virtual prototyping how Mevea tools can be used as a part of this design process and finally present three different machine cases. So I will kind of be, be waving uh, two banners here um, on part from, I can speak from Mevea side, but since this is based on a university doctoral research, the case, uh, the study cases that I'm going to present, I will also talk a bit from the end user side of things. But without further ado, let's start with the um, hybridization and electrification itself. Yeah, so 
working machine electrification and hybridization harder better faster stronger so in the working machine industry there is a huge pressure to do more with less the industry is driven towards greener solutions whether it be through using uh, renewable energy sources uh, the more boost the effective effectiveness of the already uh, used fuel types um, also maximizing productivity is naturally a huge driving factor but as well the outside regulations um, that limit the emissions uh, on the internal combustion engines are causing some sort of rumble um, either um, the machine manufacturers have to adopt these new kind of diesel engines or completely overhaul their designs uh, completely to adopt for smaller engines that allow for um, a bit more leeway in the um, emission regulations electrification and hybridization have answers to some of these driving factors or issues with them uh, electrical drives have a wide high efficiency operational area that boosts the productivity aspect of a machine uh, for example the maximum torque of an electrical drive can be achieved already from the standstill and also electrical drives can be overloaded so the um, nominal design point of a machine isn't the maximum power point um, which is the case in internal combustion engines the machine can be temporarily uh, overloaded to, a fit, um, to achieve a short burst of extra uh, power extra torque electrical drives uh, Perhaps the most um, famous selling point is the capability of um, recover kinetic energy. So we are talking about the regenerative braking, which is reducing the um, uh, fuel costs of the machine, increasing the energy efficiency of it. Uh, when we talk about the emissions, the battery-driven machines, whether they being serious hybrids or uh, running in a battery mode or purely electrical ones they have no local emissions from the driveline and finally the serious hybridization um, utilizes diesel engines that are tailored to the average power demand of the machine uh, more so than the maximum power demand which results in uh, downsized diesel engine sizing and also slower transient operation of it, reducing emissions. Um, on the latest point, um, this, uh, this slide explains a bit more what the problem is with the current diesel engine driven drive lines. Um, the diesel engines have a benefit of having an awesome power source in the diesel oil. It's an extremely energy dense uh, we are talking about uh, from the top of my head something like 40 megajoules per kilogram of energy um, but the engine itself does fairly poorly when it tries to convert that energy into a usable form um, output it from its uh, shaft um, basically the maximum power uh, maximum efficiency that a diesel engine can achieve is uh, close to a bit over 40 percent which means that uh, almost two-thirds of that energy contained in the diesel oil are expelled in heat noise and vibrations and only 40 percent can be uh, taken into use furthermore um, the operational point of a traditional machines diesel engine changes all the time we have fast transients and more often than not we are utilizing these uh, working revolution kind of control of the diesel engine 
which makes a which, in, which introduces a torque transients in general and low torque operation as can seen on the right side figure uh, results in a extremely poor efficiency well below that of the 40 we are talking about um, on average 20 or 25 percent efficiency so to give an idea on the right side in the figure the red dots are a recorded drive cycle scattered over a diesel engine efficiency map and the grayish green overlay depicts the optimal operational area where we should operate the machine if we were to utilize the maximum potential of a diesel engine um, here we can see the comparison between an electrical drive versus a diesel engine electrical drive can operate in all four quadrants of operation so what this means is that it can be rotated the both directions forward and backward and within those directions the motor can also operate as a generator so we can um, utilize positive um, rotational direction with a negative torque so we can regenerate power and the overall efficiencies are a lot higher in this case this is one of the case examples electrical drives um, the designer could achieve 95 percent efficiency from the electrical side of the motor uh, to the sha shaft so we are not losing that much energy at all and as i said previously the zero point torque um, which can be seen in this point here where the rotational speed is at zero we still can achieve the maximum torque of the machine and whereas when we go to the hybridis hybridization side we can dimension the diesel engine in a way that we constantly drive the gen set, set of a hybrid drive line at the maximum operational efficiency of the diesel engine we never go to the poor efficiency area so we take as much out of the diesel oil as possible okay naturally uh, electrification and hybridization isn't a one-stop solution um, that solves all the problems there are still many challenges um, mysteries to be solved uh, mainly the cost of energy storages um, lifetime expectancy of batteries especially um, we can draw parallels to automotive industry here uh, it's a very sum for um, especially when considering that the working machinery um, operates in a extreme conditions when it comes to um, water being exposed uh, being exposed to water um, dust um, vibrations uh, heat in both extremes hot and cold um, electrification introduces uh, various kinds of collateral costs um, it's produce um, kind of the electrical variant of a machine is more expensive than the traditional diesel powered mechanical driveline machine uh, break even times is are something that needs to be analyzed more um, the one aspect that gets um, output a lot is that aren't we just transferring the bad stuff elsewhere we need to mm, figure out where the electricity to these machines is coming from um, serious hybridization albeit lowering fuel costs they are still using the diesel oil so yeah one challenge there waiting space requirements for batteries uh, newly introduced drives um, all the power electronics we need to basically redesign the whole machine 
even though the fuel tank can probably be reduced in size, the diesel engine can be reduced in size, we still need more space. Um, do we distribute the batteries throughout the machine? Where do we put the batteries, uh, electrical drives, etc.? cetera? Um, when we talk about purely electric machinery, we need to think about charging infrastructure in the sites, um, charging times, how do we apply this um, charging into the existing um, working procedures. Um, how does this even apply to my specific type of machine? I have a machine that does this job. Can I even electrify it? It needs analysis. Um, if we were to fully change to electrical drive lines, hybrid drive lines, we probably need to redesign the whole production facility around that. Uh, that, that takes time commitment and yeah it kind of boils down into the, the phrase that most of the time we are venturing into unknown waters here so thorough analysis is needed and this is where the virtual prototyping comes into play so um, Emil did a great job on explaining how Mevea employs the digital twin as a term and the physics-based digital twin of a machine offers a extremely good and versatile platform for testing and dimensioning a new kind of driveline concepts uh, whether they are electric hybridized mr puro on the last tech talk talked about the fuel cell machinery basically same stuff uh, designing new things with a virtual prototype is extremely effective we can dimension the energy storages uh, we can dimension just how big electrical drives we need what kind of torque and rotational speed characteristics we need what kind of changes that gives to the mechanical part of the driveline, what kind of gearing ratios we need, etc. And kind of going back to the fuel tank direction, what kind of gensets we are going to need in a hybrid machine, what kind of diesel engine we need to power it, where do we run it to be as optimal as possible. And then we can analyze what kind of effect on the center of gravity this kind of installation of new kind batteries components would have, um, what kind of change we can expect from the weight of the machine. And finally, where it all boils down, how does the machine perform as an electric or hybrid variant? Um, and the key, this the Mevea solution is a good thing on many many aspects. So, first of all, what I found out when I was doing my research is that it's easy to adopt. The driveline modeling can be conducted with Mevea generic component library, which gives a good and solid results in itself. But what um, speaks a good design in a software platform is the connectivity. Many machine manufacturers, uh, research institutes have already done various kind of simulations in the driveline aspects in the working machine design. And Mevea physics based digital twin can replace the load factor of those models quite effortlessly so instead of where we would input pre-recorded load cycles we would replace that with a virtual prototype of a machine we can utilize for example a synchronous socket interface and utilize pre-existing matlab and simulink models uh, we can connect to scilab and X xcos um, we can utilize C++ based driveline models, etc. It's a whatever you a specific machine manufacturer uses, we can probably connect to it. 
The FMI is one tool also discussed on the last Tech Talk. That's a good co-simulation interface as well. And furthermore, uh, hardware in loop connectivity is also a benefit. We can utilize virtual prototype in a way that we have the electrical or hybridized hybrid driveline constructed in a laboratory floor. We can measure it, we can research it without running the risk of breaking the machine down. It's a safe and controlled environment that way. I briefly mentioned the MEVEA components as well. So the MEVEA simulation software has an included set of components dedicated to electrical and hybrid driveline modeling. Those components are meant to be uh, fast in terms of um, solving them, so, so to speak. So they are lightweight, they are fairly generic, which means that they can adopt to adopt to various different kind of applications. However, they are easily adjusted with a simple, well-explained set of parameters. The component library consists of uh, electrical drive lines, um, diesel engines as a part of a generator set for hybrid drive lines. We have energy storage component included, uh, mainly modeled after a battery. And then we have electrical transfer lines modeled as well as, as mechanical shafts as a sort of this interface between the diesel engine and a genset electrical drive, or if we need to drive, for example, hydraulic pumps directly. Uh, this is a just a, one of the components highlighted as an example that being the electrical drive. So we have two modes of control here akin to the real life electrical drives. We can select whether we want to run this as a torque controlled machine or speed control machine. And the speed control is tunable with standard PID parameters with an output limit. The model itself is a efficient to calculate, it's based on a modifiable efficiency chart. So basically, if you have an existing measurement data of an electrical drive, you can input that into the PEVIA software as a standard electrical drive and start your analysis that way. Okay, um, with this, we have established on how uh, or what the electrification and hybridization means and how the virtual prototyping comes into play. And on the third part of the presentation, I would like to go through three case studies that were conducted in Lappeenranta, the University of Technology in Finland uh, during the years 2013 and 2018, utilizing this specific approach. So the task was given that we need to do hybridization analysis on three different machine cases. In operation, these three machines are fairly similar. We have a roughly 30 ton load hole dump machine, underground loader, uh, sort of when we think about mining operations, this is a fairly standard sized underground loader. Then we had a 30 ton variant of that smaller one, but this one was important in a way that we also had the real life machine on one of our um, partners in this project available for measurement data and verification. And the final one was more sort of more approachable machine type wheel loader, which is a lot more familiar type and can utilize far more flexibility in its operation. And this one was done in parallel with a new kind of conceptual electrical machine design where electrical drive and planetary gear were integrated into one another. And this machine, this virtual wheel loader was used to give initial results on what else needs to be done 
in the drive line, as well as to give some brief analysis on the break even times. The setup consisted of four computer rack dedicated purely for MEVEA simulation software. Uh, one was actually running the solver itself. Uh, so it was done, it was doing all the heavy calculations and the three machines or computers were dedicated to visualization. The visualization was done with a, a simulator cabin sitting on top of a three degree of freedom motion platform. So what this does is that it enables to um, the operator to get immersed into the simulator. Um, he basically sits in a virtual machine's cockpit uh, with also the peripheral vision in play. And through the motion platform, he gets the sort of the seat feel of the machine as well, so that the operation is as realistic as possible. Um, then we had a uh, fifth computer running a MATLAB Simulink where the hybrid driveline models were simulated. The synchronous socket interface was established between the MEVEA simulation software and the MATLAB Simulink, which was running at one millisecond loop time. And this uh, hybrid driveline itself was running at uh, 100 microsecond loop time. So we kind of distributed the computational power where it was most needed. Um, aside from the Simulink testing, we also briefly tested out the hardware in loop capabilities with a four kilowatt uh, drive under test electrical machine connected to an eight kilowatt load machine to get the interfaces correct. And finally, we tested a full scale hardware in loop setup where we had a separate laboratory with 100 kilowatt electrical drive connected to a 300 kilowatt load machine. Uh, they were uh, utilizing the same synchronous socket interface um, on most occasions running without Simulink as a third party, but in some cases we took the hardware in the loop data and sort of use that as a part of the driveline. And then we had the rest of the hybrid driveline simulated in Simulink. The aim for this whole study was the first and foremost to see if this kind of digital twin approach is feasible for to be used as a load generator for hybridization studies. And within those studies, we also needed to hybridize the machines themselves. So we need to figure out what kind of driveline component dimensioning was required. Um, what would that do to the fuel consumption of the machine? Um, we need to verify the digital twins so that they are in fact accurate representations of the real machines. And as a sideline with the wheel loader case, we studied a new kind of electrical motor as well. So it was also a feasibility study, business case study for the electrical drive itself. On the model verification side, as I said previously, the case two study, the model was done according to real life machine and verified against real life measurement data. Uh, in in the form of pre-recorded drive cycle. The machine drive cycles were verified by driving the machine as closely as possible to that recording. So we had kind of pace notes throughout the um, roughly eight to nine minute test drive consisting of idling and driving in a mine shaft from the dumping area to the loading area, then loading a bit more than two tons of rocks, reversing back into loading area, dumping rocks and idling for the last minute or so. And all of the energy balances, energy consumption of the machines were calculated and compared to the, um, to the real life machine data that we had. 
and we got the fuel consumption to within five percent of the original machine both in well the crude liters they were within one deciliter which is fairly good and also um, on the lower right corner of the slide we can see the energy consumptions of the hydraulic motors that were in the original machine and we can see that on the positive side uh, being the power from the hydraulic system to the wheel we got within two percent of difference and the negative side where the hydraulic motor is basically acting as a pump uh, those were brief moments in the cycle itself we were within one tenth of a megajoule uh, throughout the cycle which produces relatively speaking larger differences those being 28 percent and 17 respectively for the front and rear but considering that the scale is so low we are talking about differences of minus 0 0.7 to minus 0 0.5 uh, we found out that the verification could be done with this kind of analysis and the machine model that we created was in fact a good and solid representation of the real life machine okay across the three cases the reduction in fuel consumption was observed so for example the case one the 30 ton machine uses in average 20 liters of diesel oil per hour in operation and based on the hybridization analysis the fuel consumption was lowered all the way down to 9.31 liters per hour so we are talking that it drops roughly 50 percent and that is the same story for the smaller um, underground loader as well as the wheel loader uh, which is basically understandable because all of the three machines operate in a similar way they ride on a relatively stiff surfaces and haul similar kind of loads and naturally when we have a battery included in the serious hybrid driveline the state of charge difference in the battery needed to be accounted for because from the start to the end we couldn't always guarantee that the uh, state of charge would be at the exactly the same spot we tried to aim for it but the differences were accounted for to eliminate sort of this one place that the fuel consumption could be hidden in uh, what we also used as a sort of this defining point of this analysis is that the performance of the machine should remain the same so we fix that point we drive the same cycle in the same manner within the same time through the same route the case one that being the 30 ton underground loader had the most extensive analysis we had a professional driver uh, driving cycles for us for uh, two days and we got the most thorough results and those are presented here on this slide on the right side we got that way we got the most reliable data that we could possibly hope for uh, the break-even points uh, monetarily wise or business point of views uh, were assessed in the case three that being the wheel loader and we took the current time uh, values for battery prices the electrical drive prices the power electronics pricing and we would come to a conclusion that from three to four years of operation we could save enough fuel that would compensate the initial investment of the hybridization itself so that kind of took us by surprise and we had to do the calculations a few times over because that was fast three to four years in machine operation 
should be a extremely fast break even time considering that the machine operates for a few decades at least on this slide the hybridization analysis is shown in more a uh, sort of this figure form how the load cycle looks like um, when the machine is hybridized so the idea is that as you can see on the top right corner the traction drive line is experienced in all of the fast transients that the machine operation has uh, whether you are driving over bumps whether you're trying to shove the bucket of the machine into a pile of rocks but all that work in addition to the hydraulic load depicted on red which also has big transients a spike like operation those are handled by electrical drives that are more suited to that kind of load whereas the green curve that can be seen in this level i don't know how well you can see it through the stream but it's depicted here the genset the diesel engine power point is staying constant so keep in mind that this load cycle is drilling with a 30 ton machine but on average the machine required only 37 kilowatts of constant power of average power due to the regenerative braking and the more efficient use of the fuel or the elimination of the uh, transients uh, we dimensioned this 37 kilowatts in a way that the machine required no additional charging the genset would take care of the battery balance in a sense so the fueling is conducted in a completely identical way to the original machine albeit it's a twice as far apart as the original one and finally because the average power of this machine was so low we could actually reduce the diesel engine from the original 200 kilowatt power all the way down to 66 kilowatt variant of it so it's a roughly speaking it's a two liter diesel engine that can drive a 30 ton machine without any compromise to the uh, performance of the machine uh, since we are using a simulator with a cabin, cabin and the operator in the loop it is paramount that the simulation runs in real time and it's a feat in itself that these kind of analysis can be done in real time uh, the MEVA solution contains extremely detailed as well as science proven approach to this kind of virtual prototyping uh, and as a sort of this ma main takeaway from these case studies was that this kind of physics-based digital twin solution is suitably accurate for R&D purposes as well as control system development and integration because what the driveline sees what the control system sees is a fully mimicked replica of the real life machine and even though the training is basically and outside of the scope of this these case studies training with realistic machines that have all the phenomena included coming from the hydraulic systems the mechanical driveline it's a huge boon to the effectiveness of the training but as with all things achieving high accuracy needs computational power achieving uh, complex models running in real time definitely needs computational power it's a balancing act but it's basically the same story with um, all kinds of simulations so from end user point of view the mevia solution has a number of benefits we can we could utilize the existing simulink models 
through flexible and fast interface. Uh, the environment was safe to test on, even for untrained researcher such as myself at the time. Uh, the software is intuitive and fast to use considering the um, vast uh, component libraries that were included. Uh, parameter modifications could be done within, let's say, a few minutes. So we could basically do a test drive, modify the parameters, do another test drive to see if that works, and sort of go through these rapid iteration cycles fairly easily. And complete driveline overhauls, we are talking about creating a hybrid prototype of a diesel mechanical driveline machine. It could be done within a few hours, extremely fast, comparing that to the thorough analysis and physical prototypes. The visualization is immersive. You basically have the same blind spots in the cockpit of the machine as with the real one. And the motion was extremely beneficial when driving. It produces more realistic behavior between the control interface and the seat. Um, and then in an academic world, uh, as we probably all know, presentation is key. And this kind of platform made for easily accessible, easily understandable environment to showcase one's work. Um, even though the simulator setup itself was fairly big, it's sort of constructed in an intelligent manner. It's easy to disassemble and, for example, take along to exhibitions and whatnot. So it's a conversation piece as well. And I can tell you that it's far more beneficial to use this kind of setup as a um, showcase compared to the traditional posters. Uh, and the, finally, the software that's being developed in Mevea has a strong academic background. And what I found out when I was doing the research that if I ever ran into a problem with the models, I didn't know what to do. The support was fast and accurate. If I needed something to be fixed or some new features to be added, it was always quite a straightforward, straightforward to do. So yeah, in general, um, we could do extensive research without ever requiring physical prototypes, yet we get extremely confident analysis on this kind of driveline and topology feasibility. Uh, we could draw initial results fairly easily. And I believe strongly that this kind of physics-based digital twin is sort of the safe way of moving forward with the machine design to more, let's say, greener and more efficient uh, topologies. OK, that was roughly the main gist of it. Um, I could basically <laughs> talk for days about the topic, but if you are more interested in the cases and the research that was conducted here in Finland, my dissertation uh, presenting the cases in more detail can be found in the following link seen on the screen or just by title, Energy Efficiency Analysis of Hybrid Drone Road Mobile Machinery by Real-Time Virtual Prototyping. The publication or the dissertation is a publication-based work, so the related publications are also listed there. For more direct questions, I'm available through my email address depicted on the screen as well. But at this point, I would like to thank you all for the attention. And I would 
throw the microphone back to Emil. All right, Jörg, thank you very much for the presentation. That was that was uh, quite of a quite of a package, a lot of information. Um, like Jörg said, uh, dear audience, if you have any uh, questions, then you can uh, you can reach out to Jarko at, at the email address listed right on the screen. Uh, now we have reached the Q and A session. Um, if you have any questions. Uh, do send them in now. Uh, we'll start with uh, the following. How would you assess the repeatability of this kind of approach? With the operator in the loop, doesn't this bring variance to the results? Uh, actually, this is a <laughs> extremely good question. Um, yeah. The re repeatability is one issue that was brought up throughout this research more than the other aspects. And this kind of approach where the operator is driving the cycles, on the other hand, it brings a huge um, increase in the freedom what the operator can do. We can for example, focus on one specific area, it produces, as the question was laid out, it produces variance. No two cycles are alike. So how we would tackle this was that we opened more the discussion on, on the sameness in a way that it would be sufficient to do if the work done was done in a way that we could do the same work within the same time through the same route and we could call that it would be sufficiently same drive cycle. I hope that this kind of answers the question so we would sort of limit the operation elsewhere. Naturally maybe a solution also can be used with a pre-recorded inputs for example so that if the drive line itself remains fairly unchanged, you only change, let's say, genset parameters, but not you could drive the same cycle with same recorded inputs. But on the other hand, if you are driving or if you're changing the electrical drives connected to the wheels, for example, just a small change in the torque curve, for example, could result the machine ending up in a completely different place uh, if driven with the recorded inputs. And this is why the operator needs to be in the loop in some occasions. But then we need to make sure that the timing and the work done are the same. Mm -hmm. um... Then there's this, uh, the second question, this is a bit more to kind of differentiate between industries. We have, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, we, we cater to, to an array of industries ranging from construction equipment to ports to, to cranes, forestry, material handling, etc. Um, but what kind of machine types uh, would benefit the most or the least from hybridization or electrification? Um, yeah. Mm. The most beneficial platform for hybridization and electrification is that similar, I believe that it's similar to the underground loaders and wheel loaders. They move a lot, they weigh suitably much compared to the speed that they are moving. So the kinetic energy recovery can be utilized or the electrical braking, if you may. Um, also, when a machine operates in slopes, it introduces the possibility of uh, regenerative braking. Uh, there were some occasions about 
where, for example, a mine was laid out in an open mine was laid out in a way that the loading point was on a higher elevation than the dumping point and the dumpers uh, operating between the loading and dumping points would have to ride down a slope with a full load and then ascend it back up with an empty uh, dump bed. Uh, and there was this article about a dumper being fully electric and it could uh, regenerate enough energy with a full load going downhill that when empty it could drive up uh, the same slope fully by battery power and it would still require no charging whatsoever so this is naturally the ideal machine type but in a sense anything that drives with a suitable speed that has transients in the power curve are sort of suitable in hybridization for example if you have a harvester or a forwarder operating in a forest i would say that you wouldn't reach this kind of 50 percent reduction in fuel consumption but just by reducing the transients overall you could get something like 30 percent reduction quite easily uh, then the least suitable ones would be i would say track driven machinery so excavators are a good option of a uh, good um, sort of example of this uh, when excavator drives on tracks there is uh, the speeds are so slow that there is not much to recover there um, there isn't too large power spikes there the only place where an excavator benefits from electrification is the slew motion because that's a fairly constant mass that needs to be accelerated and decelerated on a regular interval so there an energy recovery could be achieved and then i would say something like a piling machine where the whole point of the machine is to lift lift up a weight on top of a mass and then dropping it down hammering a pile into the ground that one <laughs> couldn't really benefit from hybridization at all so yeah it varies harder mm -hmm. uh, stiffer surfaces um, larger speeds high transients those are the key aspects that you are probably looking for okay right well that's that was once again very detailed detailed uh, answer though so the audience if you have any any questions relating to the topic or maybe some extended details then once again uh, you may contact the article for additional <laughs> explanation or uh, contact me and I will I will uh, make sure that all of the answers find the, the questions. But now we have actually reached the, the end. This concludes the Q&A session. Um, if anything was left unanswered, then we will get in touch with you at a later, later time. But that, that's it for now. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Jarko Nokka, for giving us a presentation. Thank you. Thanks for the my opportunity. Name, my, name, my name was Amy Varesma. I was your host today. And this was episode two of the Tech Talk. Take care. <laughs>